No one designed it. The market economy is a very good example of that. You go into a store, a grocery store, to buy something, you're rarely surprised that if you say, I want to buy some tomatoes, you don't walk out and instead of tomatoes they gave you a bag of eggs. You get the tomatoes that you want. Human action in the market is very predictable in a certain way, but no one designed it. No one invented or created the market. Human language also, as I mentioned, it changes. No one can control language. When you try to, it's impossible. It gets right out of your fingers. It can't be done. Many states have tried to consciously control languages. Languages change. They evolve over time. Um, but they're very orderly. They're quite predictable. People who are speaking Malay manage to understand each other. People who are speaking Chinese understand each other to a high degree. Not completely. We do have misunderstandings and disagreements. But languages are very effective ways of people creating orderly patterns of behavior. But no one invented it. Or you take a simple example. I'll, I'll take this off so I can do this. Take the English language, which uh, we're using to some degree right now. And I'll point out some elements of it. This, these letters. <coughs> oh. 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 Ug, oog, okay? Tough, cough, dough, enough, though, and through. That's really irritating, <laughs> right? English is a very annoying language in that regard. No one, who would invent this? It would have to be evil. <laughs> Only an evil person would invent this. <laughs> it just emerged over a long period of time and you get this crazy system called English. It's not perfect. It does have some advantages though. The grammar is simple relative to other languages, right? In, you know, German or something, you have to have many more different endings or lat Finnish, 17 cases. You do not want to learn Finnish. It's very hard. But in English, I say, I run, you run, he runs. <laughs> that was hard, right? That's pretty simple grammatically compared to other languages. But it has the largest vocabulary of any language in the world. So it has some advantages for coordination. It's relatively easy to learn at any level, but you could always go higher with this more advanced vocabulary. But I trust me, no one would ever invent this. You'd have to be insane to invent the English language. Uh, so these are products of human behavior, but no one designed it. They were not intended, they were not planned. But they produce a high degree of social order. A lot of it is accident also. Take the case of right and left on the fr freeway. Who decided if you would drive right or left? In most countries, it was not decided by the legislator. It was social practice. That the carts, the horses would come this way, you would go that way, out of, very quickly, people establish patterns of predictable behavior. It's not officially in any state in the US, there's no law that says you must drive on the right. The law says you must follow the rules of the road. The rule of the road is everyone drives on the right. So. That, that emerged spontaneously and now is a part of the legal system. So there are lots and lots of different kinds of spontaneous order. I'll give one last example. What's happening in the internet right now with things like eBay and PayPal, all kinds of new standards of behavior, new ways of treating people. When people have conflicts over commercial exchanges like on eBay, does eBay get used over here? Yeah. Okay. There, there are judges on eBay. Who knew? You can have an argument. There are ways of rating people. You can have a person expelled from eBay if they did not behave honestly. All kinds of standards have emerged now, but there was no eBay dictator who said this is how eBay will work. It's all the participants in eBay have evolved new ways of coordinating their behavior. So that's a kind of a spontaneous order that has happened in your lifetimes, not 10,000 years ago, but just in the matter of a few years, very complex forms of spontaneous order that coordinate our behavior, not perfectly, but pretty well. I hope that 
is adequate as an answer to your question. It's a deep question. Um, so I think fundamentally it is the rules that govern the rights and responsibilities of individuals that allow them to coordinate their behavior without relying on a central dictator. Right? That's a spontaneous order. And it's not perfect. People who want perfection in life are always unhappy with spontaneous orders because they're not perfect. They just happen to be better than any other alternative. The other alternatives are dictatorship, and dictatorship is always worse than, than decentralized, uh, spontaneously evolving orders. So, any more questions? <laughs> but doesn't, doesn't the market itself also dictate? Because like you said, yes, nobody in eBay said what to do, they didn't dictate you. But eBay itself, they have a set of regulation which they expect you to comply with. But now you see, as normal people, we do not have the bargaining power to bargain with eBay. So doesn't the market itself dictate people? Well, think about it. Did everyone hear that question? eBay sets the terms for your doing business on eBay. It's true. But there are alternative ways of trading even on the internet. First off, you don't have to go to the internet. You can go to an old-fashioned street market to buy and sell things. You can go to a department store. Lots of ways to do that. Uh, and there are alternatives on the, on the internet as well. There are lots of new things that are coming about. PayPal emerged quite separately from eBay. Peter Thiel said, I'll bet there's a way to allow people to transact financially that guarantees their privacy so I don't have to give you my bank information. And he created PayPal, became very, very rich in the process. But there are alternative means of doing that as well. You're not obligated to do business with, with PayPal. If they offer a good service, <coughs> you can do business with PayPal. But there are lots of others also, Western Union, traditional credit card transactions. In fact, I feel awkward saying traditional credit card. Because credit card is something that emerged in my lifetime. My parents didn't, <coughs> didn't have credit cards. So it's not that traditional in a way. It's quite new. But now the world changes. It gives us so many options that we consider credit cards traditional means of payment. The reason is the market gives you so many different options you can choose from. It's true that there's everyone always has some monopoly. I have a monopoly on my services. You want to get a Tom Palmer lecture? You have to come to me. I have a monopoly on all the Tom Palmer <coughs> lectures in the world. They're inside of me, and you've got to buy them, okay? Or I give them to you for free, as in this case. Um, so I have some kind of monopoly, but trust me, there are lots of substitutes for me, right? You could go get someone else who's more entertaining, more funny, more interesting, more learned, more wise, older, younger, more handsome. There's <coughs> lots of alternatives to me. So in some sense, I do have a monopoly on me. But it doesn't mean that the market generates monopolies. There are lots of alternatives to me to come teach an economics class. And similarly, of any given institution, the free market gives you freedom to choose this one, or that one, or this one, or this one. It's also true, and I think this is a, a background to your question, well, there's always costs, but that's part of life. Remember, I said all choice has costs. To say, I want a life in which there are no costs is the same as saying, I want a life with no choices. All choice entails costs. You get something, you give something up. That's what a choice is. The market gives you the freedom to make the choice that is best for you. Uh, one side I mentioned actually a really controversial question. It's controversial in the U.S., I can imagine in Malaysia, same-gender marriage. And I remember I was in um, uh, Iraq, in the Basra some time ago, and I was really, I learned something that was very, quite a lesson for me. You know, you keep learning lessons in life, people teach you things. And there was a woman who came up, and she, she was very angry. And uh, I was at an Islamic-sponsored uh, conference, mainly women there. 